Hello and welcome back to another video and today we are here on MotoGP 22 and I've decided to do a little bit of a challenge to see if it's possible for us to try and win the World Championship here as Fabio Quartararo. Now of course he needs to win the race for that to happen and Bagnaia needs to be 15th or lower so it's quite unlikely but more it's just a last to first challenge to see what we can do at Valencia as Quartararo. I know of course he started in fourth place on the grid but starting for fourth place is probably a little bit too easy to get to the front on this game. Now I am recording this before the race after qualifying so there'll be no spoilers for the race so if you are watching this before the race it's completely safe to do so. Now usually when you try these kind of challenges you'll pass all the AI before the first quarter because they're so so far in this game but on this occasion I am going to just try to sit behind them. Not all of them but I'm just going to not blast past them all and then I'm going to see you know where we go from there just to make it a little bit more realistic because it would be a bit stupid if we got straight up into like fifth place something off the line. But without any further ado then let's get this race started. Riders in position, the green flag waving at the back of the field. Maximum focus now, only a few seconds before the start of the Valencian Grand Prix. So interestingly enough, we actually have Vinales on pole position, which is strange because there's no AI mods on at all here. But the lights are on, waiting for the lights to go here at Valencia for the final dance of 2022. And we've had an absolutely terrible start compared to the AI. I know if I let the clutch out right, it would have been good, but at least it stopped me overtaking them all into turn one, I suppose. So we're trying to go around the outside. We'll go around the outside of a few, but again, I don't want to take the mick, because they're all going so slow on the inside. In fact, we actually just hit Remy Gardner at the back, and now he's going super slow. So we're past Gardner, so up to 20th. I think from now, I'll go proper attack mode. So we've got Darren Bender just ahead of us, and then it's Davizioso. So two Yamahas. Of course, I've not got a Crutchlow mod on, so there's no Cal Crutchlow on the inside of Darren Binder. That was aggressive. Darren's going to come back at us. I'm going to try to hang around the outside of Darren, and we've done so. But I'm sure he won't forget that one. I'm sure Dive Bomb will remember that one, so we've got to watch out for him. But Davizio's up next. Again, hopefully he won't make it too difficult for us, of course, being on another Yamaha. Then we've got Polis Magro. Then another friendly in Morbidelli, although to be fair, Morbidelli is probably a bit team Banyai with him being in the VR. 46 crew up the inside, though. We go Davizio. Up into P18, and we're on the curb on the inside of Aspargaro as well. Can we get him? I'm going to try and commit. Ah, oh, but not quite, and I've got to try and miss Warden. Fair enough, because it would have gone the green on the inside. But I still want to have contact with Aspargaro. Again, trying to go tight up the inside. I seem to remember when I did a challenge very similar to this last year for Valentino Rossi's final race, uh, last the first hit, on MotoGP 21. It was quite similar. In that corner, you could get a lot of time on them. But I also remember it was really frustrating and difficult to pass the AI. So I'll have to bear that in mind. Another, no, I was going to say another challenge warning. I definitely should have got one for that. Because I went completely on the green. It is on strict, by the way. And it's 120 AI as well, if I didn't mention that. But of course, you know, they're not that strong. There we go, inside of Polis Bargro into turn one on lap two. A little bit of hammer three on the straight there just to get through. Of course, we're on the Yamaha, but it's pretty unrealistic to pass a Honda on the straight, to be fair. There we go, past Morbidelli, past Bezeki as well, around the outside of Martin. So that's three and one. Although Martin has kept the position, so we're slotted back in behind Jorge. Mazeki's trying to come back at the inside, but we've just kept the position ahead of Marco on this occasion. Oh, oh no, we've not. He's bashed back at the inside. But there we go. This time, I think I've actually got it. So we've got Martin, who's pretty far down the order in 14th. We've got a very shaken up grid here. Then we've got Alex Marquez. Then we've got Mark Marquez. To be fair, that's probably from early season where Marquez was struggling quite a lot. Although I don't think he was ever this slow, to be fair. And Martin was probably never this slow either. Uh, and then in front of them we've got Zarco and Marini and then there's a bit of a gap forming so we probably do need to try and get through this train as quickly as possible we're closing up so much to the back of Martin can we get the switch back up the inside we're not going to get the power out of here though are we no we're not to be fair the Yamaha is probably a bit better in this game than it was in MotoGP 21 so I remember it just had no rear grip so I actually couldn't get it stopped in uh, 21 so I actually couldn't outbreak them whereas here I can fairly easily outbreak them because the rear grip is a lot better on MotoGP 22. I mean, there's a lot of other problems with the game, don't get me wrong, but the rear grip is certainly a big improvement over 21 and Superbike 22. There we are then, in the situation with Martin. This is a bit more realistic. Can't even get close to that Ducati. We might get him on the brakes. At the inside, we'll have to go for all three, I think. Here, oh, that's risky. We run a bit wide. And we've just about kept that. So we've just sort of triple overtake into turn one. That's absolutely unreal. So Martin and the two Hondas into turn one. And we're up into 12th place with Fabio Quattararo on lap 3 of 14. So I suppose with this being a 50% race, we can pretend that it's lap 6 of 28. So that would probably be a bit more realistic to be up to 12th. But even still, it's been a pretty good start. And we're underneath our personal best time as well. 
So I think I'm just going to keep getting quicker because I've not played MotoGP 22 for a while. I'm a bit rusty. I'm playing a lot of GP bikes lately, so I'm going to have to try and adapt to this physics engine, but I seem to have done it quite quickly on this occasion. We're closing. In fact, we've just hit Marini. I was about to say we're closing right onto the back of Marini. I'll drop back a little bit there because I think I'll have just affected Marini by hitting him. But I didn't expect it to break so early. He actually called me out. I think, to be honest, though, this kind of demonstrates how unrealistic the game is because you can kind of keep up with the Ducatis, and I'm struggling on this main straight, but for example, on that straight where I hit Marini at the back, I was easily able to keep up with them, and I made a big mistake at the time on this occasion. Zarco does come back through. We passed Marini. Marini's back through, but we're back past Marini once again. So that dive bomb into turn one seeming to be a favoured overtaking opportunity for myself because the AI do seem very weak there. To be honest, I think I would have got that absolutely stopped fine if I didn't go down the extra gear. Because once I went down the extra gear into first, the rear lost grip and I ran wide, which was my issue I kept having on MotoGP 21, but I think it used to happen a bit more frequently on that game. didn't have to just be first gear. But we are passing these Ducatis with relative ease, so like I've said, it's a little bit unrealistic to be completely honest, because I should be really struggling to pass these Ducatis. I'm going to be wary again through this corner. They are going to be pretty slow. I'm going to go completely around the outside of Zarco, and another track limits warning. You know what? I will let Zarco back through for that, because to be honest, again, it was kind of an avoidance rather than an actual overtake. And I went on the green, so I'll let him through. So back down to 11th place. I'm sure we'll be back past Zarco very shortly. He's going defensive everywhere, which I'm not really sure why, because again, he should... If he just breaks normally, I'd probably struggle to outbreak him, but especially into corners like that. But he lost a lot of time. And here we go, down towards the last turn on the inside of Johan Zarco. Oh, you know what? He didn't give us much room there. He really is Team Banyaya on this occasion. But you can see right here, the ride out device actually slows you down because we've just out him about the corner with the ride out device. And here he comes with the Ducati power. But there we are on the brakes. Straight past Zarco, no trouble whatsoever. And we're up into the top 10. I've got about two seconds now to Alicia Spargo, so I've got to get my head down a little bit. As soon as I say that, I go a bit wide. But yeah, I need to push a little bit now to try and bring this gap down. Maybe I have to use a little bit of power mode three, so I might be quiet for a couple of laps. You can see on the map, Miller has absolutely pulled away ahead of the group, because this group really goes all the way up to Banyaya now. Uh, sorry, Bastianini. So 1 minute 30.3, so not a fantastic lap by any means. I actually caught up right up to the back of them pretty much but I ran wide into the penultimate turn and that did cost me quite a bit of time because then it completely messed my line up for the last turn as well. So here we are then, we're right on the back of Elation and you can see I'm seven temps underneath my time and I was actually over my time up until that corner so there you go that shows but Miller's done a 30.3 so he's responded to my previous fastest lap time but here we are in the Street Power Mode 3 we're going to pass Elation down towards turn one easily on the brakes up the inside of Elation up into ninth position. Next up is Jaramir, then it's Miguel Oliveira, then it's Rins. Now towards turn two. I thought about a move on Mir then. I probably could have forced that, but again, there's no point being too aggressive at this stage of the race. And I don't want to do any dirty passes either. I've tried to keep it clean where I can. I mean, for example, I could have passed all these guys before the end of the first lap, probably, if I was riding in a, a dirty manner, just using the Palmer 3 off the line and passing them all. But Aleish is still all over the back of me, so Aleish is not dealt with yet. Whoa, almost hit the back of Jean Mir. We've got the super wide there, because AI breaks so early through that corner. Although, to be fair, they have gain on me, but I would have made the apex if they had not been there. I had to pick up because, of course, they were there. Looks like Banyai and Bastianini are now also breaking away, because see Miller is miles at the road, so we are going to have a, a task and a half to catch him. But we are going to have to dispatch of all these guys within the next couple of laps, really, I think, if that's going to be any kind of possibility. Fortunately, the tyre wear still seems pretty good, so these medium tyres are holding out at this point. You can see I'm almost a whole second off my previous best time, so I'm losing a lot of time behind these AI, and Miller is probably picking up his pace slowly throughout the race. So here we are then, down towards turn one. I'm going to see if I can do a double overtake on Mir and Oliveira. Oh, that was actually a bit closer than I expected. I think I've got to remember now that I'm with some slightly fast AI, so I'm not able to pass them quite as easily as I could the previous ones. Obviously, I passed three riders into there earlier on in the race, but they were riders that were a bit further down the order, struggling with their machinery. So of course, one of them was Mark Marquez, so it's definitely not to do with talent. Right, I want to try and pass Rins into here, I think. I can't really afford to sit behind him, and then I'm able to do the double pass on Binder and Vinales into turn one. If I could do that on the inside of Rins. Oh, he's turned it on me. That was so close to crash. You do not know how close that was to a crash for either of us, to be fair. I don't know how we both made it through there. But this is also another problem with the AIs. They have absolutely no awareness, because that was a clean move. It wasn't like I went last minute. I had gone early. I was alongside him plenty of time. But they just don't react to you at all. They just act like you're not there and just tip in anyway. 
and that very nearly had both of us off. Fortunately it didn't, but uh, I definitely felt my bike kind of losing control, and I've seen that crash happen many times. That's it happened in some background gameplay I recorded the other day as well. And I've just picked up another challenge one into the last corner. So only two more to go in this race, and we've still got about half of it left. So yeah, I've got to be got to be careful, although it's only when I'm sort of in a bit of a pack, but I can't afford to be picking up a long that penalty. But here we go then on Binder and Vinales. I've run so wide in turn one. Vinales comes through, but Binder hasn't. I'm going to go back up the inside of Vinales into turn two because, again, I've just got to pass him here. Vinales sticks around the outside, but to be fair, he didn't tip in on me like Oliveira did. Not Oliveira, sorry, Rins did. We're up to fourth place now then. Pekka Vanyar up ahead. So he's running in third place. That's not going to be the championship for us, even if I do manage to win the race from here. But I'll tell you what, there's definitely a chance at a podium, which is not bad from the back of the grid. I'll tell you what, I've just looked at the gap. It's about five seconds to Miller. Miller is absolutely miles up the road. It was actually six seconds when I looked at it, but it does seem like he's now hemorrhaging similar time to the other AI, but it's just in the start of the race, he obviously did some clean laps on his own. And that's just gained him an absolutely huge lead over his fellow Ducati riders. So here we are then, about to start the 11th lap of the race. New fastest lap to myself, 29 dead. And we are right on the back of the two Ducatis now of Bagnaia and Bastianini through turn one. We've got the perfect line. Here we go, side by side with Pekka Bagnaia. That was turn two on the inside of Bastianini as well. Just like we did on Vignale, a very aggressive dive bomb. But I think we've just about done it. Oh, he almost hit us at the back there. It wasn't quite as nice as the one on Vignale's because Vignale sort of got stuck on my outside, whereas Bastianini almost got the cut back. But he didn't manage to do it. So we're up to second place. Those were probably the easiest passes of the race, to be fair. Uh, although, actually, the uh, triple pass was probably the easiest one. But, to be honest, I was expecting that to be a lot harder because it took me a while to get through that train. But I think once you break them up on their own, they're much easier to pass. But when they're in a group, you run the risk of running up the back of them. But now I'm going to give everything I've got to try to close Jack Miller down. 4.7 seconds is the gap. It was 6 seconds about a lap and a half ago. So, you know, we are catching him at a rate. And I think if we keep that up, we should win. Oh, but I've picked up another chapter this warning. So I do need to be careful because I'm on my last warning now. And that was a really silly one as well because I just turned in way too early. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to actually catch Miller because we're about to start... The, well, we've just started the last lap of the race and we're still three seconds behind. We took a big chunk out of him to be fair. I've done very well, but there's little more I could do. I saved a bit of fuel on the last lap so we can really go for it on this one, but we're not going to fight three seconds on someone on one lap. <laughs> if we do, then he's really in some tire trouble. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to win the championship for Fabio, but Bagnaia is still in fourth place anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered, even if we did manage to actually win the race. But if we try to go for the fastest lap, well, I've already got the fastest lap, but if we try to do the fastest lap on this last lap, that would be a way to end it. Well, I did absolutely everything I could. Maybe a better player could have caught him, but 2.4 seconds. I was actually closer to Miller in the end than I was to Bastianini, so I'll absolutely take it, but unfortunately, just not the win. So you can see my fastest lap has been stolen on the last lap as well, just to add insult to injury by the simulated times. Because you see the two Marquezes are in the 28s. Actually, no, sorry, to be fair, Mark is in the 29s, but Alex is in the 28s, Zarko's in the 28s. And they most certainly weren't because I managed to pass like three riders, and I think they were in that three into one corner. So they definitely weren't going that fast because even then I was in the 30s. But I gave it everything I got. Quite unfortunate, really, not to be able to catch Miller in the end, but he was just too far in front. I mean, once I got up to the back of Bagnaia and Bashanini, obviously I started to look at the gap to Miller because I hadn't really looked at it before, and he was six seconds up the road. I mean, I don't know how he pulled that far on me to be fair but I was in the pack for quite a while so it took me about eight laps to get through the pack and then I was up here obviously fourth place with just the three Ducatis in front the two the two in second and third obviously I could catch them but just couldn't catch Miller unfortunately but of course in this challenge where we we're trying to win the championship Banyai also needed to fall off or finish outside the top 15 which he hasn't done on this occasion so either way it doesn't make much difference but it would have been nice of course to come home with that win but I've got to say, it was quite an enjoyable challenge. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well, because it was just some good racing throughout there, to be fair. Some of the AI did give it back a bit. Uh, obviously, Vinales and Rins both were quite aggressive with me. Rins kind of t turned in on me a bit absent-mindedly. But to be fair, Vinales left me plenty of room and tried to hang around the outside, so... That's quite impressive. But I have just noticed as well, that in the end, that group actually fell five seconds behind Banyaya, so... That's quite incredible. I think Vinales has held up the entire pack, because you can see they're all pretty close, except Bezeki off the back so i think some riders definitely hit tire troubles or or crashed but like i said i hope you did enjoy that one hope you enjoy the rest of your day hope you're all safe and i shall see you in the next one